There's a very effective technique catching on like crazy around the crappie fishing circles. It's used to catch crappie from under floating boat houses, just like the ones you see over my right shoulder. We're going to introduce you to this technique on this week's show and take you to a great place to do it in the state of Oklahoma. Glad you're along with us. Fox Sports Outdoors is on the air right now. It's time for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southwest region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors. This technique is very specific. It's used to catch crappie out from under some floating boathouses. It's a very specific technique involving using spinning tackle to shoot a little crappie jig back underneath these docks with a bow and arrow technique. You can access areas this way that you can't get to any other way. You can't cast to these and you can catch a lot of crappie doing it. It's a lot of fun. We're going to show you how to do it on this week's episode. And to help us do that, we've arrived at beautiful Grand Lake of the Cherokees or Grand Lake. It's located up in the far northeastern corner of the state of Oklahoma. It's the location where the Bassmaster Classic was held for 2016, but it's also loaded with good sized crappie and we hope to catch some on this week's episode. Also, we're taking you around your local region for your fishing reports for this week from our expert team of insider reporters. This should be a lot of fun. We've got the Tracker Pro Team 195 already launched into Grand Lake. We head out for the docks and we get it started back at the FSN studios with your weekend plan. The Salooner tables are very optimistic about your fishing chances this weekend. Saturday is projected to have good game fish activity, while Sunday's outlook is listed as excellent. Look for the sun to rise at 619 and set at 838. And we're approaching a full moon on Monday, so weekend evenings should be fairly bright. Stay with us for freshwater and coastal fishing updates from around the region. Plus, 2014 Bassmaster Classic Champion Randy Howell stops by to help with this week's Ask the Pro feature. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. Lose, fueled by passion, driven by innovation. Feel the difference. Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. With our baits, a good day of fishing is in the bag. And Strand Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability. we've made it out on Grand Lake and here's a perfect floating boat dock. It's a perfect specimen for what I was talking about. Fish will live underneath this dock. It's out in about 40 feet of water. So they're not on bottom, they're up, suspended underneath the dock. So the technique that we use to get to these fish, you can't cast to them. See that little hole under that dock? Under that walkway is kind of where they're going to be holed up. So what you do, you take this spinning rod, I'll show you all the gear later. You open the bale, you let that bait drop down about six inches in front of the reel. You're going to point the rod at the dock. You're going to grab the lure by the hook or a little pull tab I'll show you a little bit later. Flex that rod back double, bend over just a little bit, let go with your left hand and shoot it under. Just let it settle and the bait will basically do all the work for you. And let it go down. Got it, got it. Right where he's supposed to be. That's a good one too. Good crappie. Come up here. There we go. Well, it works. This is a technique that is absolutely amazing. I'm not, I'm not a real experienced guy at it. I've just done it for a little while, but just in the little bit that I've done it, it works unbelievably. And here's the cool thing. You're fishing for a lot of fish back in there that don't see a lot of baits. And chances are one swims by and they're gonna run out and eat it. All right, we are keeping crappie today. We're not letting them loose. We're turning them loose in the frying pan. That dude is gonna be very tasty here in a couple of days. Stay with us. Let's get you some fishing and lake reports from where you live. We're gonna get back to crappie fishing some more. Hey, I think it's gonna turn summertime here in a hurry in Oklahoma. We got the bright sunshine back out, lots of clear blue skies again. Water temperatures are starting to sneak back up where they should be this time of year, but I'm okay with all that because I think it's easier to pattern fish when it gets that way. 
why bass are out in those main lake areas where they should be right now. Look for those submerged islands and humps. Start looking around eight to 10 foot of water on top. Break lines, 12 to 18 foot. Obviously when it gets hotter, go deeper. But right now, concentrate on that eight to 10 foot depth on top. Break lines, 12 to 18 foot. Keep that jigging spoon bouncing right on the bottom. You can catch good numbers and good sizes, just like I did a couple days ago on Fort Gibson Lake. Still gonna get some summertime thunderstorms when it does and runs some water and gets muddy. Don't let that scare you. The bass fishing can be really good in muddy water. Now it's proven again just recently when we had the bass open on the navigation channel here on the eastern side of the state. Went out of the Port of Muskogee. Skyler Hamilton from Tennessee came in here, won it, 45 pounds, three days. Jason Christie was just three ounces back, finished third. Tommy Biffle had a nice one here that first day over five pounds. Speaking of Tommy, a really cool Father's Day promotion I want you to check out. You got a chance to win a fishing trip for four with Tommy Biffle on his home lake here at Fort Gibson Lake. Go to GeneLaRue.com, check it out. It's sponsored by Old Timer Pocket Knives and also Gene Rue and Bobby Garland Lures. Write something memorable about your dad or granddad with his pocket knife, enter that thing in there, you have a chance to win. You can't win it if you don't enter, you can't catch them if you don't go. If you practice this technique a little bit, you can get better and better at it where you can actually start hitting the smaller and smaller openings like this little hole in the side of the dock here. A lot of times you can pick up extra fish around the edges of a dock instead of just right in the, the obvious places in the ends. There he is right there. Picked him up. Get away from that ladder. Decent crappie. There we go. Right out of the end of that little small opening you see right in front of us there. And I caught a decent crappie. How about that? Little small opening about like that. Shoot that bait right in under it. Let it go down and there he is. All right, we're coming right back to Grand Lake right after this. Don't go anywhere. Little tiny opening under there. Let's see if I can skip it. Got it all the way back under there. There he is. Right under the corner of that hole in that dock. Decent fish. All right, there we go. Nice crappie right there in the live well he goes. Let me uh, tell you a couple of things about this technique. First of all, it's a skipping technique. You actually want the bait to hit the water and skitter its way across the top. So you've got to shoot it in there with such force that it skips off the water, skitters its way all the way to the back. Most of the time, the fish will be as far back under there as you can get. They want to be in the deepest shade and under the biggest part of that dock. So skipping it back in there with a lot of force is very critical. And there's a piece of this puzzle that I'll show you on the Academy Right Stuff at the end, but it's a brand new jig head that the uh, Bobby Garland company has come out with that keeps your plastic from sliding down. One of the problems with this is if you don't have a, 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 the right kind of head, when it skips, the little plastic body of the bait will actually slide down, slide down the hook and you won't get a bite. So this is a new kind of a head that holds that plastic body up on the head real well. We'll show it to you at the end. Let's get you some more fishing and lake reports from where you live. Hi folks, this week's Lone Star Lakes is brought to you once again by Lone Star Outdoor News. Available at sporting goods retailers or get your subscription delivered directly to your door. Now flooding across Texas has been in the news for the last several weeks and this week is no different. You may not be able to fish the lake you want to fish, you may simply have to find one that's open, like Trading House where we are today. Trading House has great catfishing, you'll find them along the dam, on the main lake points and in front of the flooded grasses. Use your prepared catfish baits or cut or live bait for Trading House catfish. Now bass can be found taking advantage of this high water condition in those flooded grasses chasing shad, insects and such, so you'll want to use your moving baits. Use your spinner baits, use your traps, use your Senkos. On Amistad, the fishing has been fantastic and water levels, although low, are still better than they've been in quite a while. 
Recent returned fishermen are telling me about catches of 40 to 60 fish a day. Although not the big Amistad bass of the past, still fish up to five pounds are being caught. And again, moving bait's the key. Shallow diving crankbaits, medium diving crankbaits, your Cinco's in watermelon red, and your spinnerbaits are all catching Amistad bass right now. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you by Lone Star Outdoor News. Now let's check in with Mr. Bill Olson. He's on the coast. Hi folks, this week's report is brought to you by Port Aranjas on Mustang Island, the fishing capital of Texas, where anglers enjoy pristine bays, estuaries, 18 miles of surf, and the deep blue waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Plus the local restaurants will even cook your catch come sundown. Come fish and play Texas Island style. For more information, visit portaranzas.org. Well, next week we say goodbye to spring and hello to summer that officially begins June 20th. Temperatures continue to slowly rise and the shallow bite at first light is a little shorter. However, there are still plenty of birds working the upper coast and trout are still in the surf. Mid-coast anglers are fishing the surf or wading shallow shell flats. The mouths that drain back lakes are good places to set up on a falling tide. Now along shorelines and mid-bay reefs, croaker have assumed the top spot for live bait anglers. Around the jetties, live shrimp or unfair lures, slow sinking shrimp or mullet have produced. From Port Mansfield to Port Isabel, the intracoastal waterway is seeing fish stack up as temperatures warm. Look for breaks along the top edge of the channel that drain the flats as good places to set up. The fish should be in the deeper channel water underneath. Offshore, we're seeing increased catches of kingfish and ling around rigs or over wrecks. Angers are catching red snapper in state waters. This Saturday and Sunday have a double tide schedule of two high and two low tides each day. I'm Bill Olson, and I'll see you on the coast. There's a perfect little spot now that that sun's popped out right on that corner. Right there in that shade. Got him. Got him. Right into that corner. Come out. Come out. Good crappie right there. I'm going to net him. That's a good one right there. Nice crappie. In the live well he goes. We finally got some sun to break out. It's been overcast here all day long. What that's doing is it's creating a, a shade line right across the outside of that dock. And you always want to watch and see what angle the sun's going in. Find that shade line and that's the cover that the fish will actually use. They're just sitting right on the outside of that shade line. And so I pitched it right up on the corner of the dock, right on the shade line, let it go down. And they're using that shade as their cover and their ambush point. You want the sun out, you want the shade line, and that's where the crappie are gonna be. Stay with us. We're gonna come back for more dock shooting, Northeast Oklahoma, right after this. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Exide AGM Marine Batteries. Starts like new, stays like new longer. Motor guide trolling motors, because accuracy matters. Nitro performance fishing boats, champions aren't born, they're made. And Fox Sports Outdoors is driven by Fort Worth Nissan and Lone Star Toyota. Hide it under there, little bitty hole. Got him, come out of there. He came out. Pretty good crappie right there. Welcome aboard, matey. And you welcome back. We're at Grand Lake today and we're dock shooting crappie. What a great place this is to do this because of all these docks out here. And I wanna answer a question, but first I'm gonna put this one in the live well with the rest of his buddies. How do you know which docks are going to be holding the crappie when you've got literally thousands of docks out here? A couple of things. One, you want to look for the docks that are out on points. So if you've got a main lake and you've got some coves, some creeks, and you've got little points in between them with docks on those, key on those. That's number one. Nearly every one of the docks that we've caught fish out from under so far have been out on a little point. Secondly, you want to key on the depth doesn't matter, by the way. You want to key on isolated docks. So I can swing down through here and show you, there are some places where the docks are rowed up right next to each other. Not desirable. Find these docks like this one that are kind of out by themselves. That's the only cover 
for about four or five hundred yards around here. It's just that dock. That's the only place they can get for any kind of protection and cover to ambush bait. So look for points, look for isolated docks. You'll have a much better chance of getting bit. Time for fishing and lake reports for you. Hey friends, Captain Kevin Broussard here with your Fox Sport Louisiana Outdoor Report. We're talking saltwater fishing, early summertime action, Lake Kakashu. Tell you what, you can see right here, we had a couple boats go out. We came up just a few short of our limit of 120 trout. I think we got a little over 100 trout here. We got into some big bull reds that were schooling. I'll tell you what, great day. Soft plastics, mostly uh, Kelly Wigglers, watermelon red, eighth ounce Rockport Rattler jig heads and quarter ounce jig heads. The trout were under the birds. I'll tell you what, pretty easy fishing out there right now if the weather will allow. We are still dealing with a lot of muddy, fresh water, but I tell you what, the fish are there and they're hungry and they want to eat. Now, I talked to Toe Phil Bourgeois down on the feet. He also said the redfish are doing great up in the shallow water, soft plastics and gold spoons. He's also flying down to the chandeliers, doing really good on the trout. Tell you what, get out on the water, we want to see you. Just let it swim on its own. Out here, right on that outside edge. Got him, there he is. Oh, another good one. Better fish are starting to... Oh, he got off. Ah, did I get him? I got him. <laughs> you don't get that to happen very often. He came off, and I made a mad swat with the net. <laughs> I caught him out of there. This is a great, a great way to catch fish. And I mentioned that uh, you're fishing for fish that don't get beat up so much. All the fish up around the shoreline and the bank get, get hammered a lot, but these fish live out here under the shade. And let me tell you one thing real important here. Depth makes zero difference. It doesn't matter whether you're in 10 feet or 70 feet of water. It's that dock that's holding the fish. And remember, when you're fishing under these docks, you're only fishing, say, the top 10 feet of the water column. Don't worry about letting that bait try to fall to the bottom. In fact, you're below the fish. Fish the upper 10 feet and just think in terms of, even though it's 60 feet deep, it's only 10 feet deep in your mind. And fish that top 10 feet of the water column in the shade and think edges. Fish the outside edges, flip it back in there deep, swim it to the outside edge, and many times it's right along that shade line is where they're gonna bite. Be sure to join Fox Sports Outdoors again next week, Thursday at 5.30, or catch the repeat airing Saturday morning at 8. And you can always watch the latest episode in full HD on the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Plus, catch up on all past episodes by clicking the archive button and see lots of how-to and product videos by clicking the how-to button. Also, stay up to date with the latest fishing news, videos, and photos by clicking the follow button on our Twitter feed. And get lots of that same info by clicking the like button on our Facebook page. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Tracker Boats. It's more than just a boat. It's a tracker. Costa Sunglasses. See what's out there. Mercury Marine. Official outboard of Fox Sports Outdoors. And Lawrence Electronics. Find. Navigate. Dominate. Welcome back, everyone. It's time for the Ask the Pro segment, where viewers get expert insights from professional anglers. This week's question comes from Jim, who asks, is keeping quiet really important in bass fishing? For the answer, we checked with 2014 Bassmaster Classic champion, Randy Howell. This is a great question. Is keeping quiet uh, really important in bass fishing? My dad always said it was, and I've learned now that my boys are 10 and 14. I've always said that to them too because I didn't want them to be loud because I was trying to concentrate myself. A lot of times the fish can't hear you, but your dad don't want to hear you if you're a kid in the boat sometimes. That's where that came from. But I think really being quiet in the boat as far as slamming compartment lids or dropping your pliers or stomping the, on the, a cooler lid down, those vibrations travel through the water like you know sound and they magnify that's what fish hear your voice they can't hear that at all i don't think so don't worry about talking loud just don't make any noise on the floor of that boat thank you randy if you have something to ask one of the pros simply visit our website and follow the ask the pro link to submit your question now it's time to give away a new pair of sunglasses on the costa catch of the week 
Each week at this time, someone wins a free pair of Costa sunglasses in the Costa Catch of the Week contest. Here's this week's winner. It's Nicholas Lee of Friendswood, Texas, showing a 20 and a 22 pound red snapper he caught offshore off Freeport, Texas. If you'd like to be our next winner, just go to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com, click on the Costa Catch of the Week box on the right side of the front page. The winner does have to be over 18 years of age. And you can see all of the Costa frame and lens styles at their website. Just go back to the front page of our site and click on that Costa logo right there in the middle of the page. You'll see all of the beautiful 580 polycarbonate and glass lenses and all of the frame styles, including the brand new frame style for 2016 that I was wearing on this week's episode. It's called Raphael. Next up on the Academy Right Stuff, here's the gear that you'll need in order to properly shoot these floating boat docks like we caught all those crappie doing on this week's episode. It begins with the Luz Wally Marshall Pro Series rods. It's got the little bow tie insignia on it showing you that it's the right rod to shoot docks with. Six and a half or seven foot is the length I need. And you can see that it'll flex all the way back to give you a lot of power when you're shooting all the way to the back of those docks. It's matched with the Luz Tournament Metal spinning reel, and I've got it spooled up with eight pound test Strin fluorocast line. I like a very invisible line when I'm fishing clear water like Grand Lake has. The lure we use for this dock shooting technique is very specific. It begins with the Bobby Garland Head Doctor Shooter Jig Head. It's got some little ribs just below the head so that when you push the plastic body up to the head, it holds the head up when you skip it under those docks. That's a notorious problem. The plastic falls down when it skips, but it won't with this Bobby Garland Head Doctor Shooter Jig Head. We used a Bobby Garland Slab Slayer body. The red seemed to work particularly well. And then here's a cool thing. This is a brand new product. It's the Dock Shooter Pull Tab System. It's some little hologram shiny pull tabs that you hook onto the hook. You can use the pull tab to grab and pull back and shoot it with that bow and arrow technique so that you don't have to grab the hook and risk hooking yourself. I was standing in line early one morning at the convenience store the other day and I got to watching what people were buying for breakfast. Sugary soft drinks, energy drinks loaded with caffeine and sugar, donuts, fried pies, even candy. Even more startling, I got to watching what some moms were buying for their little school age children. The exact same products. No nutritionist would ever recommend that we either eat ourselves or feed our children those kinds of foods for breakfast of all things. It is time for all of us to take a much harder look, not only at what's in our shopping cart, but what we're eating and feeding our kids for breakfast. I hope you enjoyed learning this technique, shooting docks for crappie. By the way, if you're coming anywhere up and down the Grand River system here in Oklahoma, the limit is 15 per person per day. Always check the limits at the lake you're going to fish on. Thanks for joining us from Northeast Oklahoma. Until next week, I'm Barry Stokes saying be safe, have fun. Bye bye y'all.